Hi everyone, we just finished The Great Shark Escape by Jennifer Johnston. There was a lot of information in this story, so I'm gonna review everything we learned before we do another story. The first thing that we found out was that Miss Frizzle and her class were going to go on a field trip to an aquarium. We learned some ocean facts. Some of you might have known this, some of you might not have. One million species of plants and animals live in the ocean. The ocean covers three-fourths of the Earth's surface, so there's more water than land. Only one-fourth is land, so if you had a pie, only one little piece would be land. There are five main oceans or areas of the world, and they're all connected. Here are the five oceans. Pacific, it's the largest and deepest. The Atlantic is the second largest, and I put a star here because that's the ocean that we live near. And if we go swimming at a beach, we're swimming in the Atlantic Ocean. The Indian is the third largest. The Antarctic surrounds the South Pole in the Antarctica. It's very, very cold and icy. And the opposite part of the Earth is the Arctic. It's the smallest and it surrounds the North Pole. Then we continued and learned some shock facts. We learned there are 368 different kinds of shocks. They are all sizes. The smallest is the seven inch spined pygmy. It's only seven inches long. The largest is bigger than a bus. It's 50 feet long, half a football field, and it is called the whale shock. And most sharks are between five and 10 feet long, as long as me or double me. All sharks are fish. They are not mammals. That means they have gills and not lungs. But like fish, sharks do not have bones. They have cartilage instead. I didn't know that. They have gills to breathe, like I just said, and sharks have five to seven pairs of gill slits on the sides of their heads. Most sharks are shaped like a torpedo. This helps them glide through the water swiftly. Their tails are longer on the top than on the bottom. Here's a diagram of a classic shark. Sharks live all over the world. They are marine fish. Another word for that is saltwater fish. But a few sharks, like the bull shark, have been known to swim in freshwater lakes and rivers. The first shark that the book talked about was the whale shark. It's the biggest fish in the sea. It's 50 feet long and they weigh 15 tons. They have 3,000 tiny fish, I mean teeth, and they eat only plankton and tiny fish. So it's huge and it only eats little things. They are filter feeders or rakers. The fish and plankton go in and the water comes out like a strainer. It can filter 15,000 gallons of water an hour. Sometimes they are called gentle giants. They never bother people. Only about 25 types of shocks are dangerous to people. So that means not many of them will hurt you. Only 7% are dangerous, 93 are harmless. Whale sharks use their whole body to push themselves in the water. These are the four most dangerous types of shocks. And I know you've heard of this one, the great white, tiger shark, bull shark, and oceanic white tip shark. In one year, only about 100 attacks happen to people. That's not a lot. Two thirds of shark attacks happen in cloudy or muddy water. Sharks don't even know that it's a person they're going after because it's so cloudy inside. The next shark we learned about was the great white. It's one of those dangerous ones. It's the most feared shock of all. The top is gray, which helps it blend into the dark water and sneak up on its prey. 
It's a fierce hunter. It gets its name from its white belly. It has razor sharp triangular teeth. It does not chew. It rips the prey and swallows it whole. Their prey are sea lions, seals, otters, sea turtles, and they might eat other whales. That's why you might see great white sharks down near Cape Cod. There's a big seal population and they wanna eat those seals, so be careful. Sharks um, usually have five rows of teeth and the great white does too. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about those sharks' teeth, they're not like ours. Most sharks have five rows up to 3,000 teeth. The first two rows are for catching the prey. And if a tooth is lost, a replacement tooth moves forward from the back and then a new tooth comes in to fill the space in the back row. Amazing. The next shark that we learned about was the angel shark. It has a flat bottom, sandy coloring, and it can camouflage. You all know what that means. It blends into its surroundings. Although, and it also allows it to sneak up on its prey. Remember, prey is what animals eat and hide from predators. Angel sharks live in the Pacific Ocean. They're often caught by other sharks for food, and they will eat crabs, lobsters, and clams because they're at the bottom of the ocean where they live. The next and the fourth shark we learned about was the goblin shark. It was very rare that they see goblin sharks. I was so surprised when they saw them. They're pinkish gray, they have tiny eyes and a long, flat, pointy snout. It is the world's ugliest shark. Isn't it ugly looking? Their body is not a top torpedo shape. It's usually found in the deeper waters, and it can live in the Pacific, the Atlantic, and the Indian Ocean. It cannot survive in the Antarctic or the Arctic. It's too cold. They eat shrimp, squid, and fish, and sometimes it might even eat other sharks. We didn't learn too much about the next shark, but the shark that was mentioned next was the thresher shark. All we learned was that its caudal fin or its tail is as long as its body. The next one, and it's kind of weird shaped head, is the hammerhead shark. It's strange looking. Its head is flat and on the sides they have knobs sticking out and it almost helps them look like they were looking through a binocular. They're gray and they're big. They're 11 feet long. It attacks when it is disturbed, and just kind of like the goblin, it eats fish, squids, octopus, crustaceans of shellfish, and other sharks. It will even eat other hammerheads. Not too nice. Then we learned a little bit about baby sharks. Hopefully you can listen to the song baby sharks do, 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 do. okay baby sharks are hatched by eggs they live inside their mother's body and they come out as live babies so an egg inside its mom and it comes out a litter of sharks can be as little as two to as much as 135. the mother sharks do not take care of their babies Babies have to fend for themselves. They swim and hunt as soon as they are born. So that song, Baby Sharks, would not be happening. The mother and the father and the grandmother and grandfather would not be with them. Here are some more shark facts. All sharks are carnivores or flesh meat eaters. They are three types, fast swimming, slow swimming, or filter feeders. Remember we learned about those filter feeders with the whale sharks. The fast swimming sharks eat fish, squid, seabirds, and other sharks. Slow swimming sharks crush and eat shellfish, crab, lobster, clam, 
found on the ocean floor. So they're the bottom dwellers. And then we have those filter feeders, which is like the whale shark. They only eat krill, plankton, and tiny fish. Shark senses are unbelievably good. They are hearing. They can hear up to a mile away. Sharks can detect movements and sound using its lateral line system. Lateral line system are pores along the side of its body that help it hear. So they don't have ears like us. They have what is called the lateral line system. Their eyesight is really good. Their smell is incredible. They say that some sharks can smell one drop of blood in a million drops of water. That's how good it is. They have a special ability in their senses. They are electrical impulses that animals give off when their muscles contract or bend up and down. They can sense it. This helps the bottom dwelling sharks find the shellfish. Dolphins can gang up on a shark and actually kill it. So dolphins we love, but a group of dolphins can actually kill a shark. The next type of shark we learned about was the blue shark. They're called the wolves of the sea. Sometimes they travel in packs like wolves, and another name for a pack of fish is a school. Those schools are always all male or all female. You'll never have boys and girls together with blue sharks. They are a game fish. People fish for them to eat. That's all that means. Overfishing has caused them to become threatened. They're dark blue in color, and that's where they got their name. The next group is the tiger sharks, like Kennedy School tigers. <coughs> they have stripes on their back. That's how they get the name. They're called trash can with fins. They'll eat almost anything, garbage, junk, anything around. They travel usually alone, but they always are moving. They travel 50 miles a day. Sometimes they might even attack humans. A vocabulary word is bioluminescence, or glow in the dark. Fireflies, algae, fungi, and other invertebrates glow in the dark, and this helps them stay away from their enemies. And the last shark we learned about was the mako shark. It's a fast swimmer. Remember, fast swimmers eat fish, squid, seabirds, and other sharks. Little fish stick on it. Those fish that stick on it are sucker fish or remora. Remember the sub got stuck on this fish? They eat fish that travel in schools. So they'll eat tuna, herring, and mackerel. Humans hunt makos. And they have also been known to attack humans and they can leap above the surface almost like dolphins can. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you is a list of the sharks of the world that was at the end. Here are some that we talked about, and there are some that they didn't say too much about. When you do your project, you might want to choose one of these sharks of the world. You might want to choose an ocean animal that we had um, heard about or mentioned. Or from our last book, you might want to choose a whale of the world. We will be telling you exactly what we want you to do if you want on your ocean animal report. Look for the information next week. Bye-bye.